uh, to tell you a little bit about both of them, but I think everybody has met them before. So Carla Rachel Samoth was recently selected as the co-poet laureate for Altadena, 2022 to 2024. Her chap book, What is Left, was published December 2021 with Dancing Girl Press. Her debut memoir, One Day on the Gold Line, originally published in 2019, will be reissued by Golden Hills Press in 2022. Her writing on blended, unblended, queer, multiracial and single parent families appears in a variety of literary journals, anthologies, newspapers, and blogs. Carla's work has been twice named as Notable Essays of the Year and Best American Essays. A Pasadena Rose poet, a West Hollywood pride poet, and a former Penn teaching artist. Carla teaches creative writing to high school and university students and has taught incarcerated youth. She was selected as a Carrizo Artist in Residence, February 2022. She lives in Pasadena with her loved partner, Milo. And you can go to her website, carlasamoth.com. So thank you so much, Carla, for presenting with us today. And our next presenter is Gerda Govine Etart. Um, am I saying that right, Gerda? Etarte. Etarte, excuse me. She has published four poetry collections, 2012 to 2018. She established the Pasadena Rose Poets in 2016. She initiated poetry readings at Pasadena City Council meetings in 2017, lunchtime readings, and served as editor of their first publication, Poetry Collection 2019 Reflection, Resistance, Reckoning, Resurrection. Their seventh anniversary celebration will be held this July, 2022, to include publication of their second collection. Her poetry was featured in numerous venues and published in diverse anthologies, journals, and newspapers. Gerda's two poetry books will be released in 2022 and 2023. She earned her doctorate from Teachers College, Columbia University in higher and adult education administration. And it's absolutely wonderful to welcome both Carla and Gerda. And we're very thankful that they always say yes and always do these wonderful poetry programs for you. So thank you all very much for joining us today. They have agreed to allow the Pasadena Public Library to post today's program on YouTube Pasadena Library. So you can review back to the workshop as you write your poetry um, at another place or time other than at this event. So welcome, Gerda and Carla. Okay, Carla, why don't you start off? Okay, good afternoon, almost evening. Is it officially evening? Um, thank you so much, Christine, for inviting us tonight. Um, and um, we wanted to just talk briefly about our particular connections to parks and the outdoors. Um, I, in my, in, a, in my earlier career life, um, I did a lot of work at national parks. So not so much state, but, but grew up camping in state parks in Washington state with um, a big love for the outdoors. And um, once said that I never wanted to work in an office, which is kind of funny because I spent many years working in offices. Um, but in the earlier years, I worked, um, um, one of the positions I had was working at Chaco Canyon National Monument in New Mexico um, doing an internship and then later in another um, area of indigenous ruins in, in New Mexico called Grand Quivera National Monument. I also was on the first all women's trail crew, uh, backcountry trail crew. So we were flown in by helicopter and rode out on horseback several months later. All our food was flown in or packed in and 
it was quite an experience. Um, and those times, you know, the, the, the inspiration that you get and the, the, just what it does for your soul being in the outdoors like that um, for a period of time where there aren't too many people around is, is really priceless. Um, I um, hope that today, even though we're, we're writing some, some of you may be outdoors. I feel like Swancha, you were outdoors originally, like that you can sort of imagine yourself in one of our wonderful California state parks. Um, and Gerda, do you wanna talk a little bit about your connection to parks and the outdoors? Sure, my pleasure. Uh, as a child, uh, I grew up in St. Thomas in the Virgin Islands. And the first park or garden that I remember is called Emancipation Garden. And it was built to commemorate the freeing of the slaves, uh, July 3rd, 1848 in the Danish West Indies. So taking this journey today, I started looking at all the different parks I've been involved in most of my life. I've been hiking in upstate New York. I've been to Niagara Falls, um, uh, Yosemite, uh, Grand Canyon, Anza Borrego Desert in New Mexico, White Sands National Park in New Mexico. And I have hiked, I have picnic, I have camped. So for me, parks and outdoors help me to breathe. It helps me to catch a second wind. So I'm very pleased. And when I was a kid, my mother said, I said to her, why can't I spend the night in a library. And um, she said, why do you wanna do that? I said, well, that's where the books are. So here I am. So I'm still addicted to books and libraries and it's a real pleasure um, pleasure to be here. And, and today we're gonna have some fun. We're gonna have a good time and to help you, um, you know, share with us some of your memories in writing about the park situations you've been in or you can make it up, you know, because when you write, you can write something that happened or something that didn't happen, something that could happen. So let's have a good time. So Kavi, you can jump back in. Okay, thank you, Gerda. And I'm gonna start out by sharing a poem by a poet um, who I met in Washington State. I don't believe he's alive anymore, David Wagoner. Um, and I'm gonna share a screen a moment. Um, hang on one second. Okay. You never know sometimes when you share a screen, what's going to pop up, right? Um, my email, the wrong poem. Um, so I'm going to ask first, would someone like to volunteer to read this poem? Just the, the top one lost. I'll read. That'd be great. Lost by David Wagner. Stand still. The trees ahead and brushes beside you are not lost. Wherever you are is, is called here and you must treat it as a powerful stranger. Must ask permission to know it and be known. The forest breathes, listens, it answers. I have made this place around you. If you leave it, you may come back again, same here. No two trees are, are the same to the raven. No two branches are the same to the wren. If what a tree or a bush does, does is, not, is lost on you, you are surely lost. Stand still, the forest knows where you are. You must let it find you. Thank you, Tiffany. That was a really nice read. Um, I'm gonna read it once more. Lost by David Wagoner. Stand still. The trees ahead and bushes beside you are not lost. Wherever you are is called here and you must treat it as a powerful stranger. Must ask permission to know it and be known. The forest breathes, listen, it answers. I have made this place around you. If you leave it, you may come back again saying here. No two trees are the same to raven. No two branches are the same to wren. If what a tree or a bush does is lost on you, you are surely lost. Stand still, 
the forest knows where you are, you must let it find you. Does anyone want to say anything about this poem? What, what kind of emotions does this poem bring up for you? Thoughts? Well, it, it describes um, being outside in a forest, what you're going to feel because you must treat it as a powerful stranger. And you can imagine being like in Yosemite where the tall, tall, unbelievably high trees are. Um, and you, you listen, you can hear the trees kind of move. You can hear the movement. Um, there's some wind, you can hear the ravens and the birds. You can hear the birds. Um, you just really have, you stand still you can hear a lot of noise and then you can hear a lot of quiet. Mm. So true. Thank you. Anyone else make any observations about this poem? This. And, yeah, it looks like you can recognize it when you come back because then you say, again, you say here when you come back. Mm. So for, uh, at first you're a stranger, but when you come back, you're not a stranger anymore. Yes. And it's interesting because the title lost, but in a sense, you're not lost when it's familiar. Um, can you think, I, I want you to think about when in your life um, you might've felt lost. Could be lost in the woods or lost in, in, in your head or lost in life. And has being lost ever felt like a positive thing? What does it feel like to be lost in the woods? But what does it feel like to be found? What does it mean to you to be found? Um, so what I'd like is for you to think about writing a poem about a real or imaginary time you felt lost or found and consider incorporating in aspects of being lost and found in a park-like setting. Um, but it doesn't have to be that. Um, if you need to start with a phrase, consider starting with stand still. You could use stand still, or you could use wherever you are is called here. Um, and keep repeating, if you wish, throughout your poem, stand still. Every couple stanzas. The rule on these prompts is that there aren't really rules. Um, we want you to feel free to write whatever comes your way. So hopefully the poem will get you thinking about this idea of being lost and found. But if you end up getting lost in your poem and going a different direction, that's OK, too. Or if you find yourself um, getting lost in a piece of uh, like a short essay or a piece of fiction, that's all right, too. We just want you to go out and wander. So we're going to take, um, I'm going to say we're going to take about 12 minutes and then I'll kind of check in with everybody to write and yeah I'll give a two minute warning when we get closer are we trying to have um the last words in our phrase rhyme or no that's a wonderful question thank you so for poetry, it can if you some people like to rhyme with poetry. There's some forms of poetry that ask you to rhyme at specific places in the poem, but you don't need to rhyme. Um, you absolutely don't. And you can make stanzas. Do you know what stanzas are? Well, tell separate, us find us. Separate parts. So the there's sections of the poem. So you might have when there's two stanzas, they're called couplets. Um, and um, when they're three, they're called thersets. Um, so you could, but you, you could have it all one piece like this. You could have very short lines or long lines. And you'll notice that the lines don't necessarily break at the end of a sentence. So that's something that you can also experiment with. And I just, yeah, go forth, get lost. If you get lost and you're not quite done at 12 minutes, then keep writing. Um, but wander, please. Yeah, so stanzas are like paragraphs, basically. Mm -hmm. what, what's that? Yeah, stanzas are like paragraphs. 
Um, kind of the equivalent. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to add anything to that, Gerda? Yeah, one of the things that's really important as, as you're writing, just, just open the floodgate and let whatever comes out, come out. And, and I think that there, and you might end up in the 12 minutes, someone could end up writing two short poems or one long poem. It doesn't matter, whatever you feel you need to put on, on, on the page, do that. Don't second guess yourself. Don't say, I shouldn't do this. Just do it. And we can talk mm -hmm. about it later because one of the things you want to be able to do is to have a certain flow, a certain movement. And you don't necessarily want it to interrupt. And the, and the, the poem may be going north. All of a sudden it shifts to south. Let it be. Yeah, it and then you, can, then you can edit later. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You don't need to edit exactly. on this draft. And also some people like to compose out loud so or read it out loud after they've written it. So feel free to mute yourself and, and read it out loud. So that way you can sort of hear the sound and the feel and the taste of the words. Exactly. Okay. Ready? Yep. Yeah. Okay.
How are you all doing? Does anyone need another minute or two? Or I see a thumbs up. Okay. Welcome back. Welcome back. How did that go for everyone? Another thumbs up. Yes, yes. Um, I would love to hear, you're not required to read, but I'd love to hear what you wrote. Um, was that a volunteer, Swanji? I see you. Yep. I it. yep. Oh, what a beautiful background. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it kind of fits with this. <laughs> it does. Okay. <clears throat> Enjoying the outdoors, I'm wandering along, taking a turn left. Look at these flowers. Oh, there's a butterfly. Stand still and enjoy. It looks beautiful over there. Take another turn. It starts to rain. Where am I? Where is the way home? I take, I take out my phone to look at the GPS. Ah, that direction. The rain stops. I'm walking home anyway, but I take my time. Just another turn over here. <coughs> There's a blooming bush. I never know the names. I don't care. It's beautiful. It's pink and green. And there are bees. I take a photo to remember. I don't want to leave, but it's getting cold. I will remember. Very, very nice. That's great. Excellent. Beautiful, beautiful. I love the sense of like discovery in this poem, wandering about and um, you get, and, and, and that the speaker, we often, we say the speaker of the poem because the speaker is not necessarily speaking for the poet. The speaker may be someone completely different, that, uh, a different character. So always try not to assume that that's about the poet. But at any rate, um, I, I like the way the speaker said, I, I don't, I never remember the names. I, very <laughs> relatable. Um, and we're always told like use specific details, but sometimes, you know, we don't, we don't know, we might know a color or a shape, but we don't necessarily, we don't necessarily know the names. I, I, I once learned pseudo suga menziesii for Douglas fir, and that's all I remember about that. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much for starting us off. Mm -hmm. I, I can actually tell you how, how, how this, I thought of this. Uh, it was not actually about the state park because I couldn't think of one that like that fast, but it was about, it was pieces of different walks that I took around the neighborhood. That is great. And isn't that, I mean, I this is what we're hoping you'll think about even if you can't be in a state park i hope everybody here gets to visit their state parks um, yeah so but, once I, I visit but, one i think i will remember to write another poem <laughs> yeah but i mean just to be able to write to be able to wander mm -hmm. in your own backyard or your neighborhood it's beautiful mm -hmm. um and and when i'm in a, a national or a state park it reminds me like hey i could look i could find some of this sometimes just blocks away um Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Okay. I, I, I want to make a couple of comments. I loved your poem. And what I got was a sense of freedom and movement. There was nothing in the way. And also being able to see. Um, and that's feeding your brain and your thoughts. Um, and and not losing your way because you've got your GPS. So that's reality setting in to say the least. And you talk about a blooming bush that has no name you never remember. Welcome to the club. And also what I liked, you take a photo. So you won't remember, but whether you took that photo or not, it's in your head, you won't forget. And, and the other thing too, when you were talking, this particular poem was sort of a tapestry of the various walks you've taken before. So you put it together, all the different threads in this tapestry, represents the trips that you've taken before and and i think you did a excellent job it felt this is a feel-good poem thank you 
Yeah, I, I won't be able to continue with the workshop because I need to go outside and take a walk now. <laughs> <laughs> not, really, not now, not now. Uh, okay, I wait, I wait. I'll go. Great. Okay. Into the woods I go. Me. Lost in a thought, my heart feeling full. A branch brushes my fingers and I am home. My soul is at peace. The air I breathe. In. Out. In out my soul coming back alone i am me alone i am free into the woods i go to find me <laughs> oh yeah that's excellent excellent Thanks. excellent, uh, excellent. Yeah, that, would you mind reading that again just okay that's short <laughs> yeah it's oh, short. Sure. Yeah. yeah into the woods i go me lost in a thought my heart feeling full a branch brushes my fingers and i am home my soul is at peace. The air I breathe in, out, in, out. My soul coming back. Alone I am me. Alone I am free. Into the woods I go to find me. Mm. Precious. Precious. I'm in the woods a lot, like a lot. So you really captured that the the intertwining of lost and found, right? Yeah. Like find like being lost helps you to find your your center, your soul, your home. I mean, it really came across. It's Very contemplative. Only, yeah, it's the only spot I actually feel where I can be myself. So yeah. Without any nobody else there with me. That's why I, I hike by myself. So just to be get to get my myself back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you really get it across like that you feel at, at home there. And it, like like it's even like the woods are greeting you by you brushing against them or you greet them <laughs> and then you're home. Yeah, it's very beautiful. Thank you. Very tactile. And all of you feel free if you notice a particular phrase or word to put it in the chat too as as. Sometimes that's too distracting when you're trying to listen, but other times it just it's it's nice to note those those phrases. Wonderful. Um, who would like to go next? That's for sure. I, I'm happy to go next. This is Jessica. Let me see. My, I'm in. Um, sorry, I'm in my car waiting. My kid, my son has uh, drumming practice, so oh wow, I'm participating <laughs> remotely. <laughs> That's great. Awesome. Really, yeah, I'm really Welcome. grateful for this workshop. So thank you. Um, uh, let's see, let's open up my notepad. So lost in the journey, but the journey is already divinely mapped out. Put trust in each moment, even when a map cannot guide the path. When patterns are broken, new possibilities can bloom. There is purpose in feeling lost. Lean in, see what there is to be discovered. Magic lives in the surprises, the unfamiliar, the unknown. That's it. Oh, excellent. Oh, that's beautiful. Good job. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. Uh, magic lives in the surprises. Oh, I think I think we have two fat, three fabulous poets at this, this workshop. Absolutely. Whoa. Thank you for um yeah, this opportunity. I I don't write often, and I think there's a there's some uh, I, I create mi like mental barriers for myself, and so I, I appreciate the coaching and just like letting it flow and um, and yeah, because you just never know what's going to come from the mind to the to the paper. So thank you for the for the free space to to be creative. Thank you for jumping in. <laughs> yeah yeah and i think that's a great theme for this workshop because it, it is about you know related to the, the state parks but it is about sort of that interchange of being lost and found and yeah how it happens mm -hmm. yeah my uh poem was inspired by i, I just i love having a little sense of spontaneity when I'm on trails like not to the point where I'm for sure like I know I'm I'm not going to be able to get out but just knowing that if there's a fork in the in the road 
hmm, I wonder what's down that path. Still keep being mindful that if I flip around, I'll, I'll find my way back home. Um, mm-hmm. But just, yeah, taking, taking the unbeaten path and the unfamiliar path because there are new discoveries that you can find. I'm sorry, but I had to write that down. If there's a fork in the road, I wonder what is down that path. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, mm-hmm. thank you so much. Thank you. Anybody else? I wrote a piece I can read if no one else is going to jump in. Wonderful. Okay. Found. Unexpected words capture led by movement of trees. Sound of gushing water. Green is in control. Many shades, many shapes. Hear the swish of branches caressed by the wind. Beneath feet, leaves crunch. Look up at sky, sunlight dance above. Choosing places to shine and maybe not shine. Colors colliding, magnetizing yellow, orange, white, and pink surround fragrances, lean on air. Found a place to breathe, let myself out. Just being in this place where quiet lives, sounds tiptoe. I sit on on fallen tree trunk, inhale, exhale, hum, and sing aloud. The open spaces and crowded shrubs are home. They welcome, even dance with the breeze. This place a respite, a place to slow down, face thoughts, feelings of aloneness, joy, thinking how and why important to just to be me. Me and nature, nature and me connected beyond these woods. No barriers in the way, leave with more sense of self, ready to jump back into the everyday, one moment at a time. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. That was really gorgeous. Uh, Knowing the beautiful place that (laughs) that Kurt lives at, I was imagining also, but it could be anywhere, Mm -hmm. Um, right? Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I think think too, in terms of, of being able to give yourself permission to just let go. You're not trying to write and correct and thinking about it. You just open a space where the words will land on that page because you've opened that space to make it happen. And, and to, to go with that flow, to not get in the way of that flow and just let it be. It doesn't mean it's perfect. It doesn't mean it's the best poem you've ever written. That's not the point. The point is, is to give yourself permission to let those words out because the words are there. And, and so it's, it's an opportunity and this can happen, you know, you could be, you could be, you know, sitting in, in your car for some reason, all of a sudden something comes to you, grab a paper, write it down. I tell people, write it down so that the words will sort of flavor your brain. And next thing you know, you've got two or three paragraphs on the page. Um, because the words are there. If you trust the words and the words trust you, you always be able to write no matter what. So do all of you wonderful poets, do you read a lot of poetry? Do you um, read a lot? Um, have you always written poetry? I mean, there's, there's an art to this to say a lot in a few words. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the economy of words in poetry, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Gerd is a master at that. Um, <laughs> Thank you. I, yeah, yes. I, I came from prose. Um, so I, I, I actually have had to really experiment and work with different structures to, to pull in what would be my natural tendency to go further. Um, and it's been really freeing. Um, 
And that might be an interesting thing to try someday in another workshop. But when sometimes having that form and structure, we're, we're some of us have been scarred by bad poetry classes in school, and we think <laughs> that it has to do it exactly this way. But sometimes actually having a couple st structures to choose from can be really freeing. Um, you can even get lost there. Um, but I was going to go back to Goethe's poem. I really again i feel I, I see that theme about letting yourself be lost um so that you can actually find the unexpected words that letting go mm -hmm. and i just think it's so interesting because um the words lost and found have already their own connotations you know and i actually have been lost in the woods twice where it was kind of scary so <laughs> but what about being lost in thought, you know, or, or, or the, you know, some of the ways that all of you have written about the idea of being lost and found in the woods is, is really um, made me think further about this. So thank you. We are going to, unless somebody else wants to read, and I don't want to put any pressure, but so. And <laughs> I, I just wanted to answer um, the question also. I, I just started writing poems the last time we had a workshop. I wrote a poem there and then um, short time later I had an experience and, and um, thought like I really have to write something down about that. So I write, wrote a poem about that, so, which I would never have thought of without that workshop. That's great. Yay. <laughs> Hey, I, I I was forced to become a poet by Goethe because I <laughs> yes guilty yeah I when Goethe started the Rose Poets I used to write a, like a couple poems here and there but I was more of an essayist or a memoirist and doing writing some fiction and then Goethe started calling me a poet and I started writing more and more poems to the point of where you find me now where pretty much all I write is poetry so. Mm -hmm. I'm not a person of many words, so I, I'd like, I found, wow, poem, maybe that's, <laughs> that's my yeah. thing, <laughs> so I can use fewer words to, to write, <laughs> like to write things down that I'm thinking. <laughs> so do you check out poetry books from the library? Do you check out poetry books? No, no? Usually, no. maybe I've, I've had one or so, but usually I don't read poetry very much. Mm. I really, um, well, I really enjoy the chance. To, I, I used to tend to look at, read poetry books in bits and pieces. And re I recently went on a month long writing residency and Gerda joined me half the uh, part of that time in New Mexico. And that I was really able to do some deeper reading and really like devour one collection at a time. And that was really wonderful. Oh, I'm sure. So who is your, Gerda and Carla, who are your favorite poets? Do you have favorite poets? Oh my God, so many. I love mm -hmm. Ada Limon, now we're getting into the um, Latino heritage. Uh, Ada Limon is wonderful and Eduardo Corral. There's so many, I feel like just, um, oh, I could go on and, do you want to name a few, Gerda? Um, yeah, uh, uh, I, yeah, I love uh, Lily Long Soldier. She wrote um, a book called Whereas, and it was one of the most thoughtful and meaningful collection I think I've ever read. Um, my other uh, favorite poet is Nikki Giovanni. Yes. I've always loved her work. I've always followed her. Um, and there's so many others, but those are the two that sort of pop, pop up to the top of Can that. you write the names in the chat? So sure. I might be able to find them because I, I have no idea how to spell all this. Okay. And then Nikki, she has so many books. Um, and I'll put her name, make it just look up the books that she has written. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. 
Yeah. Um, the, the book that Gerda mentioned is really wonderful too, if you're interested in exploring different forms of poetry. Um, it'll totally blow you away to get rid of any preconceived notions about what a poem has to look like. Mm -hmm. My favorite is William Wordsworth. Yes. Okay. Yes. I wander lonely as a cloud. Are you all familiar with that one? Yes. I wander lonely as I'm sure, Carla, I'm sure you all are. And Gerda are. But I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high or whales and hills. When all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils beside the lake, beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze. Um, I, I don't have it memorized anymore, but at one time we, I had to memorize that for school. And I just think it's just beautiful. That is gorgeous. Okay, I'm gonna stop putting names in there. These are, <laughs> there's a lot of, thank you for bringing up words. There's a lot of poets, um, like I, I think I threw out some that are more, some that are more contemporary, although one that have been around for a while now. Um, yeah. um, but there are some wonderful poets that um, Langston Hughes, uh, Oh my God, we could go on forever, right? I bet Gerda could name another 20. Yeah. Okay, um, I, I want- to get into the next poem? Yeah, I'd love to get into the next poem and I'm gonna put that up in just a moment. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and read that to save some time. Sure. Sorry, I'm trying to share a screen. Here we go. Okay. And you can move it up and down as I read, correct? Yep, yep. Okay. Uh, Camille Dungy wrote this poem in 1972. It's one of my favorite characteristics of life. A fifth of animals without backbones could be at risk of extinction, say scientists. Ask me if I speak for the snail and I will tell you I speak for the snail. Speak of underneath, under earthedness and the welcome of masses, of life that springs up, little lives that pull back and wait for a moment. I speak for the damselfly, water ski, mullocks, the caterpillar, the beetle, the spider, the ant. I speak from the time before spinelessness was frowned upon. Ask me if I speak for the moon jelly. I will tell you one thing today and another tomorrow. And I will be as consistent as anything alive on this earth. I move as the currents move with the breezes. What part of your nature drives you? You in your cubicle ought to understand me. I filter and filter and filter all day. Ask me if I speak for the Nautilus and I will be silent as the Nautilus shell on a shelf. I can be beautiful and useless if that's all you know to ask of me. Ask me what I know of longing and I will speak of distances between meadows of night blooming flowers. I will speak the impossible hope of the firefly. You with the candle burning and only one chair at your table must understand such wordless desire. To say it is mindless is missing the point. Mm. What I'd like you to, to think about is um, um, just one second. I think I lost my place. Okay. Uh, what I want you to think about based on what I just read from um, Ms. Dungy, 
uh, write a poem in which you speak for a living organism. It could be an animal or a plant. You could speak for them in the sense of in support of them or how in speaking for them, you speak for yourself too. So you have your self ready. So you have about um, 10 minutes to write. And Carla, could you do be the timekeeper? Sure. Okay. So just let her rip and then we'll talk later. So you've got 10 minutes.
Okay, that's 10 minutes. Okay, great. All right, so how did it go, ladies? Who'd like to jump in first? Should I go first again? First. I took care of the laundry and of the <laughs> Multitasking. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm speaking for the butterfly. There were many of us, thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands. Now I'm alone sometimes. People still smile when they see me. I flutter and fly. No one can catch me, even with their camera. I'm orange and black and I'm special. Once I'm gone, you will never get me back. All my brothers, all my sisters. We are strong, but we are delicate. Wow, could you read Beautiful. that again? Could you Beautiful. read that again? Sure. Wonderful. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. So the title is I'm speaking for the butterfly. There were many of us, thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands. Now I'm alone sometimes. People still smile when they see me. I flutter and fly. No one can catch me, even with their camera. I'm orange and black and I'm special. Once I'm gone, you'll never get me back. All my brothers, all my sisters. We are strong, but we are delicate. That is beautiful. I love what you did. Um... You, 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 you are the butterfly. <laughs> you are the butterfly, yes. I get that, okay? And, um, and I love that um, you flutter and fly. Um, no one can catch me. People still smile. I'm alone. And it's, it's, a, it's a piece that is joyful. It's a piece that's tender and it's a piece that made me smile, you know? So, so this particular piece was really kind of a, a sweet promise that you gave to us, you know? Um, delicate, sweet, but at the same time, strong. Thank you so much for that, appreciate it. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, I really, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I'm just saying beautiful poems. poems. These are beautiful poets that have joined this program. I really love the rhythm in this poem. It had a cadence to it and it was very, it just really flowed the sentence. I really love some of the phrases that you used. I didn't get them all because I both times I was just listening, but there were a few that I really loved. Um, 
more than a few. Yeah, it, it felt like every word counted in this poem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyone else that would like to read what they've written? No, I think that's all. We're, oh, all I'll, I'll, I'll read if, if, if um, oh, perfect. unless Great. you want to read, Christy. Um, I don't want to read. <laughs> okay. Um, I was inspired to, to try it. Yeah. My dad taught me how to bark like a dog by observation. I don't think he channeled our met like us, a mixed breed. My son once thought his Papa Irwin was on the radio when he heard a dog bark. My beloved speaks for our St. Bernard and I bark at times, letting them know I too can try out our dog's idiom. You don't speak for Dakota, I tell my beloved when he makes a doggy voice explaining what is needed, a stomach rub, an ear scratch, a chicken treat. I speak for Dakota when I say I'm a gentle soul, but snarl, threaten me, push me too hard and I might rise up. Sweet, stubborn and smart, she doesn't need anyone to speak for her. If you join her posse, you must love her slobber and all. She sits quizzically and watches our cat eat her food and drink her water. But when the weather is rough and the M80s go off, you'll find her cowering under the bed. Me, I run for the closet. Lovely. Very, very nice. I love the humor in it. You know, um, it's, uh, this is a fun poem and we're getting to know your dog, even though you're not really speaking for your dog. And it's, it's light and it's, and it's, um, it's playful. And I really like that a lot. Um, um, yeah. So yay. <laughs> hey, thank you. Swanti, would you like to say anything? Yeah, I like when she said she speaks the idiom of the dog. So like you have the same language, you understand each other? <laughs> you and the dog? <laughs> <laughs> They know each other very well, and and, yeah. and I think that um, you know the ability to to speak for someone else or to speak in another voice is a gift that we have as writers, because there is no right way to write. Uh, you just write the best that you can, and I think that also too, and it, you should have opportunities to have fun and be silly and laugh and, and sometimes even cry. So, so life is a string of emotions. And I think in the writing, we also find a string of emotions um, that's all over the place. And, um, and so I want to, to thank you and everyone for, for being here. But I just want to, to end on one, one thing I wrote real short, but it was in general, it wasn't about the extra exercise. I write as I am, I am as I write. I speak as I am, I am as I speak. I am me. And that's what came to mind when, all, when I gave the assignment. So, um, I, Christine, I wanna thank you so much for <clears throat> honoring us the Pasadena Rose Poets and for being in our lives for years and years and years. And I, and I said earlier to you, Christine, I said, my answer is yes. Now you can ask me the question. Well, we need to tell Swanti and um, everyone else that joined us today that there's going to be another workshop or a poetry about Hispanic poets for um, National Hispanic Heritage Month during the time of September 15th, October 15th. And I think maybe you're gonna present about, what did we decide about October? Let me look at the, um, September. It was, you're gonna present on September the 26th, we think, right. um, at five o'clock. So your workshops are absolutely fabulous. I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a very dull writer 
of all of these programs I have to do. And um, I'm constantly figuring out programs and figuring out things, but it's just such a joy to me to come to your programs. It, it really is, even if you're not a poetry writer, just to have this opportunity to listen to the words. And I think we've had three wonderful poets that have joined us today, today that have, um, whether they've written before, Swanti hasn't, and Tiffany's just started to write, and I don't know about the other lady, but um, it's just wonderful. So thank you so much for bringing that out in all of us. Thank and you so I've much. loved listening. Well, thank you, Christine. You know, we do this because we love to do it. We do it because we can't help it. And this is our way of, of making a difference in the world, especially in a lot of unexpected places. And, um, and our hope is that we can continue to provide uh, these opportunities as we move ahead, uh, COVID or no COVID. But I really want to thank the, the uh, folks that um, joined us today. And it's really important to us because we support and help you, but you also support and help us. No. We don't have all the answers. And, and no. I just want to say thank you so much and we'll see you on September 26th. Right. Carla, thank you for being here. You're a good partner. And one of the, the two of us, are, uh, two of uh, nine poets. And um, you will have some opportunities in the future to meet some of them also. So thank you so much, Christine. And, and well, thank you, Gerda and Carla, for always saying yes and presenting it. I just love these programs. I just look forward to it um, so much. So thank you very, very much. Yeah. Thank you. Um, without, without, this program, without this program, I wouldn't know that I even could be a poet. Yes, now you know. You yes, you. you're a poet. Like I told Carla, you're a poet. Watch yeah. out because when, when Skirta yeah. says that, you're going to be stuck. <laughs> no, you're, you're, you're hooked into hooked. it. You are you're hooked. hooked. Yeah, you are hooked. And the library has lots and lots of poetry books, and they have given you a list today of fabulous poets. Mm -hmm. Fabulous poets. Just start with them. Well, and actually, you just need to get the Rose, um, the Rose Poet books, Gerda, oh, yeah. Gerda's books, Gerda's mm -hmm. books. And Carla's on one day on the gold line, you know, really it's, well, that's a terrible soul green one. What happened to you on that day? The one day on the gold line. Yeah, that that's, was, yeah. that's really more of a story. That's not a poet, a poem. Yeah, that's a book and a story. So um, anyway. I guess you're telling us it's time to go. <laughs> no, no, I, no, I have a phone, I have a phone call. Well, thank you so my, much. It's been wonderful spending you. time with all of you. Thank you with the next so one. See yeah, you it's soon. my husband. Okay, bye. 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 Thank you. Yeah.